My name is Josh Brom with Equal Rights Institute, and we're taking a close look at the Reversing Road documentary. So in my first video about the Reversing Road documentary, I focused on how biased the documentary is. Now I want to focus on responding to some of the pro-choice claims made in this film. I didn't know anything about abortion until I became the chaplain at Skidmore College in 1966. And I told my wife at one point, I said, you know, 1,400 young women, what kind of problems could they have? And she said, you're a dope, you're gonna find out. Students who were pregnant but didn't want to tell their families would come to me. And I send the student to a doctor in Schenectady who always found it necessary to do an abortion. And that's how I learned that I wasn't just a chaplain. I learned I was an abortion counselor. There were many other college chaplains doing the same thing around the country. Okay, so a couple of thoughts. Um, it's very interesting to me that the chaplain says that this doctor that he was always sending women to, he said, quote, always found it necessary to do an abortion, end quote. Um, I want to briefly show the personal reaction that I had watching this interview. Um, I guess it's a, this is a pretty secular video, if you will, but just for a moment, I'm going to put on my, my Christian hat. As a Christian, hearing a chaplain describe a whole network of chaplains turned abortion counselors is disturbing to me. Um, I think these people genuinely meant well. I think these people think they were really helping people. And many probably have scripture verses that um, they would use, I would argue, out of context to defend their pro-abortion choice beliefs. Um, but I also personally believe that these people will stand before God one day. And I'm, I'm not convinced that having good intentions will be sufficient justification for sending who knows how many women to an abortion practitioner, again, who always found it necessary to do an abortion. This is the first of several times that this documentary focuses on religious people who are pro-abortion choice. And just so you know, in the next couple of clips, you're going to see B-roll on the documentary um, of an abortion practitioner actually doing an abortion. You don't see anything graphic, um, but that is being shown on the screen. And so just fair warning, if you want to look away during the next couple of clips um, and then just kind of listen to my commentary, um, you, you won't really miss anything. I did my first abortion in 1967, illegal abortion. The clergy consultation called and they asked me, Curtis, would you consider doing abortions? Do you have any problems you want to discuss with me? So that's where it started. And I thought I could go to prison, I could lose my medical license. But I grew up religious, so I became an ordained minister my senior year in high school. And I think the basic Christian teaching is compassion and service. My head, my heart, my hands to, to do this. I can make a difference and I'm going to take the risk. So I'm glad that Dr. Curtis Boyd is a compassionate person. I'm, I'm just kind of taking him at his word for, for what is motivating him. But compassion can be misplaced. And as a result, we can do things that are wrong, uh, fueled by compassion. Um, imagine if an assault victim went to her boyfriend and said, I, I need you to go kill that guy who assaulted me. And the boyfriend does it. Um, the boyfriend could say, look, I, I grew up religious. I became an ordained minister in my senior year in high school. And I think the basic Christian teaching is compassion and service. My head, my heart, my hands to do this. Like that wouldn't excuse killing the guy even if he did it out of a feeling of deep compassion for his girlfriend who was abused by this guy. So I'll just say, I, I know that there are religious people who are pro-choice and there are religious people on, on, on the other side of this issue. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're all interpreting the Bible or our religious beliefs equally well. Um, and I think the documentary filmmakers are doing this to, to kind of say, look, hey, maybe Christians should all be pro-choice um, because, hey, Jesus was all about compassion, right? But Jesus also said, let the little children come to me. And I don't think abortion was what he had in mind when he said that. Um, I think um, a biblical Christian worldview uh, would say that we know that human beings are valuable because of the kinds of things they are. So they're intrinsically valuable. 
um, and the shedding of innocent blood is strictly forbidden. Um, and so if the unborn are fully human beings, then with intrinsic value, then, then abortion would be wrong. Um, and, and that is a much stronger philosophical argument than just a, a vague um, gesture toward compassion. My philosophy is that the goal in providing abortions is to assist the woman in making the best decision she can for her and her life and whatever that takes. So Dr. Boyd is either poorly explaining his philosophy, which seems weird given that he could have just done a different take, or his philosophy is not well thought out. What in the world does whatever it takes mean? Well, I, I want to know what are the limits of what Dr. Boyd would do if the woman in front of him said that she needed help? I, I can't imagine that he would kill her two-year-old, even as he said that that was the best decision, you know, for her and her life. But why wouldn't he? Do you see how vague and unhelpful this definition is? Now, just so you know, the next clip actually starts with no video. I actually cut the video from the very beginning of this next clip, just because at this point, if you watch the actual documentary, um, like this clip would be starting and showing a very, very graphic picture of a naked dead woman. And so I just, for the sake of this video, I just, that's just black. Um, and then after that cuts away, you'll see some other B-roll. The point of this clip is what is actually being said in this part of, of the documentary. The facts are astonishing. 350,000 women a year suffer complications. 5,000 of these women die. It's actually kind of embarrassing to me that the documentary makers included this clip of someone saying that 5,000 women are dying every year from illegal abortions. Um, that is the statistic that was generally being thrown around by the pro-choice side, um, but one of the people who created the statistic has come out and said that it was false. So this data originated with, with NARAL, the National Abortion Rights Action League, and Dr. Bernard Nathanson um, is the co-founder of NARAL. And after he um, came out and, and joined the pro-life side, um, one of the many things that we learned from him was that this statistic was completely fabricated. And I quote from him directly. He said, how many deaths were we talking about when abortion was illegal? In NARAL, we emphasize the drama of the individual case, not the mass statistics. But when we spoke of the latter, it was always 5,000 to 10,000 a year. I confess that I knew the figures were totally false, but in the quote unquote morality of our revolution, it was a useful figure, widely accepted, so why go out of our way to correct it with honest statistics, end quote. I can't believe that there are still people that are quoting those numbers. We know that they were false. Um, Dr. Nathanson estimates there is actually probably right around 500 people dying every year. And that's terrible. You know, I, I think it is tragic anytime anybody dies in an abortion, whether it's a woman or whether it's her unborn child. Um, we don't want to see people die um, in dangerous abortions. Whether or not the fact that illegal abortion is more dangerous uh, justifies making it legal to kill unborn children, I think, is, is not a very good argument. And um, if you want to learn more on how to respond to that, uh, my brother Tim recently made a video that kind of explains in about five minutes how to respond to back alley abortion arguments, which, by the way, are going to be much more common now, given that the pro-choice side is, um, I would say, a lot more freaked out about the idea of Roe versus Wade maybe going away at some point like now than they used to be. And so um, I'll have a link in the description um, to Tim's fuller response to back alley abortion arguments.